Okay, so I was, uh, I'm not going to go through these constraints in detail. Uh, I can easily give you an appendix to this, which shows the balance sheets, why it is that these constraints actually don't constrain. You can go through the balance sheets and you can see that adding on these self-imposed constraints actually do not constrain the um, treasury from spending. So a summary of the sovereign currency approach is deficit spending creates financial assets. Okay, that is from the godly stock flow consistent uh, modeling. Note, and this was discussed yesterday, the central bank operations do not. All they do, you think of it this way, the central bank liquefies wealth that already exists because they can buy it from you. The central bank, uh, in theory, can buy anything, anything it wants to buy, and it and thereby liquefies it, turns it into the most liquid asset you can have which is cash, or if you're a bank, reserves, okay? Normally, central banks limit their buying to treasuries, but in the global financial crisis, our central bank bought mortgage-backed securities and a wide variety of other private financial assets. Uh, I, I was in um, uh, Colombia, and the central bank actually owns art museums. So you can buy art museums, and they operate them, they charge entrance. They don't operate them to get a profit. They operate them because central banks generally are very profitable anyway, because they can issue the most liquid assets that don't have to pay any interest, and then buy assets that do earn interest, even treasuries. Um, and so they're very profitable operations, and so out of the goodness of its heart, the central bank decided to buy museums and operate them, and a lot of central banks can do that. I always joke to my students, maybe this won't mean anything to you anymore, they, they could buy Madonna records. Okay? You don't know who Madonna is, I know, and there's no such thing as records anymore. So it but they could buy those if they wanted to. And what are they doing? They're monetizing. Uh, anyway, uh, central bank operations uh, don't increase private financial wealth. What they do is uh, uh, monetize it. So think of it this way, I said, central banks lend and treasuries spend. It doesn't matter whether bonds have to be sold first. That's one of those self-imposed constraints. So long as the central bank accommodates reserve demand, it won't it doesn't matter whether the central bank is prohibited from buying new issues because the treasury can always sell new issues to private banks and then the central bank can buy them from the private banks. That's a permitted operation. And it doesn't matter whether the treasury has to have money that is deposits in its account at the central bank before it writes a check. Central banks and the banks cooperate to make sure that the treasury always has deposits in the central bank. 